Well, Democratic presidential nominee and U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris has rallied supporters at a campaign event in Scranton, Pennsylvania on Monday. Let's get this done, Harris told the crowd of volunteers as they headed out to knock on the doors. Harris will campaign in five Pennsylvania cities, ending the day with a rally in front of the Philadelphia Museum of Art, which will include performances by Lady Gaga, Ricky Martin and Oprah Winfrey. She is expected to spend the election night at Howard University in Washington, a historically black college. That is her alma mater. Pennsylvania is the biggest prize among the battleground states, offering 19 of the 270 electoral college votes. A candidate needs to win the presidency. Non-partisan U.S. election analysts have calculated Harris needs to win about 45 electoral votes on top of the states that she's expected to win easily to capture the White House, while Trump would need about 51. Let's take a look at what has been said by her in this rally in Scranton. We're ready to win? Yeah. All right. But what you all are signing up to do today and what you've been doing, like, let's enjoy it. You know, and I know you do. I can feel the mood in here because it's the best of who we are as a democracy. And so the way I've always been thinking about our campaign in these next 24 hours is as we are getting out the vote, as we are canvassing, let's be intentional about building community about building community, about building coalitions, about reminding people we all have so much more in common than what separates us. So over these next 24 hours, I know everyone is here, including our youngest leaders. I see you over there. I know you're not ready to vote because you look like you're about eight. But, <laughs> but you tell the adults in your life why it's important. They vote, okay? <laughs> With our ladies and gentlemen, we are being joined by political strategist and analyst Arun Ayagiri from New Jersey. Mr. Ayagiri, uh, I would say a very good evening to you because it is uh, around 9.40 there, if I'm not wrong. Well, Mr. Ayagiri, I think today the biggest question remains, while we've discussed in depth with regards to campaigns and strategies over the last couple of weeks, today's question remains, when will the result actually be declared in the U.S., given the kind of close contest we've seen? Will we see a repeat of 2020 where the results uh, were supposed to be out on November 3rd, but it finally was declared that, uh, you know, we had seen Joe Biden win uh, on 7th. So there was a four-day delay. In fact, it also brings us memories from back in 2000 when the contest was between George uh, W. Bush and Al Gore. It had taken the U.S. court to, in fact, come in and determine who uh, is the final winner. Are we going to see a similar situation in 2024 this time? Hi, Shreya. Thank you. Uh, that's right. It's, it's, it's late in the evening. Uh, I'm not even the candidate. I'm not running for president, but I still feel like, feel like I am because this is probably the fourth or the fifth interview I've been giving um, in the past two days. Uh, <clears throat> so thank you for inviting me. So the U.S. election is more complex than people think it is. Uh, both in terms of number of uh, phases involved, which is the, the popular vote, which, which happens in November, which is tomorrow for us, uh, today for you guys. And then the electoral college vote, uh, which happens in December, in this case, uh, 17th of December this year. And there's also certification uh, prior to uh, the electoral college. So it's a long process, number one. Number two, in terms of when the results will be declared, that also, it's a long process because uh, I mentioned this yesterday in News 9, it, uh, it's actually 51 states. It's as if 51 elections are running at the same time because it's a, it's a strong federal system, unlike India and other uh, countries where there's one uh, central election commission which handles elections. Uh, there's nothing like that here. Each state uh, is, uh, is free. Uh, to conduct elections uh, according to their own rules. So technically, there's 50 states plus uh, District of Columbia. So we, we can consider this as 51 elections happening simultaneously uh, starting the same day. Actually, it's not even the same date. The in-person or early voting began several days before that. And obviously, we know there's mail-in ballots as well. So the process has been uh, has started way before uh, the Tuesday, which is November 5th. It's still continuing and it will still continue. To answer your question, yes, it will take some time, to be honest, to, to, to call the races. It will take some time. Some states, thanks to COVID, 
I'm sorry about that. It's an oxymoron. Thanks to COVID. Um, some states learned uh, the process uh, in 2020 because that was the first time uh, we ever had a pandemic like that. And it's the first time uh, it was all mail-in ballots, uh, the whole process. It, it was first for America. So some states learned the process. They're much more prepared this time in 2024. They, they have the lessons learned, both in terms of counting the ballots, handling the ballots, uh, paper ballots, and also making sure the election integrity uh, you know, is intact. Uh, they have more, po more poll workers this time. They're more prepared. They got enough training. The community is working actively with the law enforcement as well to make sure the poll workers feel safe and not threatened. Uh, so yeah, so it, it will take some time. Uh, again, the, the focus is, is on uh, swing states. Uh, it shouldn't be, but the focus is the, technically the focus should be in, on all the 50 states, including D.C. But we, as we all know, life is not fair. So and so is elections. Elections also, in a way, not fair because all candidates focus on the swing states only. So considering the seven um, swing states, uh, each state has its own process like Pennsylvania doesn't doesn't start counting until a certain time of the day uh, some states start counting before that so to be honest it could take several days for the uh, the race to be called the reason why it matters so much uh, every state matters so much. for example Nevada could take a few days uh, the reason why it matters so much is because of the tight margins involved here as you can see for the past several days I'm uh, you know I've been involved in politics for a long time uh, uh, the the margin is is too slender to call uh, it's it's fluctuating rapidly between 48 uh, and 49 sometimes 48 decimal something 49 decimal something so it's it's too close to call uh, I, I I tell the candidates not to get excited just because one candidate is one person over another. Mr. It doesn't Mr. Mean anything. I, I actually have a yeah. question for you here. Sorry to interrupt you, but but yeah, do we sure. do we do we see the margins, however, widening a little as we approach towards the result? Eh? Uh, the difference yes. is widening a little bit between Kamala Harris and Kamala Harris. Uh, Trump actually closing up to Kamala Harris in several of these swing states. You're right. Uh, uh, again, if you go, there's two ways to look at it, right? If you if you look at the national polling average, which is uh, you know poll of the polls, like they say, uh, that and there is looking at the polls in all the swing states, which is uh, seven. So in about uh, uh, I think about four uh, swing states: uh, Arizona, Nevada, Nevada, Georgia, North Carolina, East and the West. Uh, Donald Trump is is leading by about. One person more so in Arizona. Arizona, uh, the latest numbers are fifty percent for Trump and forty-seven for um, uh, Kamala Harris. So that is something which can be taken relatively seriously, and and I say that for two reasons: not just because of the numbers involved. Number the three percent margin is relatively more. Uh, number one, number two, Arizona has never uh, has not been a swing state all it, uh, all its life. It's only the past couple of cycles. Before that, it was strong Republican. So considering that and looking at the three-person margin, I would say probably Arizona is safe for uh, Trump. Uh, and so, uh, and, But North Carolina, Nevada, uh, Georgia, the difference is less than 1%, which is, which is almost even. So I won't take that seriously. And Pennsylvania, uh, which, is, uh, which is I kept saying, I was mentioning in TVN and Bharat Varsha as well the other day, in Hindi, uh, that Pennsylvania and North Carolina, I personally think, would be the decisive states. But if you look at Pennsylvania, even the polls are calling even. So that that's like, uh, that, yeah, that's like we can't even take that seriously at all. And it can swing any states, um, any side. If you look at uh, Kamala Harris's rallies, I don't remember the exact number, but I think 17 or 18, uh, I, I believe uh, she had 17 or 18 town halls and rallies uh, in Pennsylvania. I, I, I agree Pennsylvania is a big state. It has 19 electoral votes amongst all the swing states. But still, Pennsylvania is receiving a disproportionately high percentage of attention uh, <clears throat> from, from both the candidates. So, yeah, you're right. But the national polling uh, uh, average is 49 
uh, on Harris side and 48 on the Trump side. I also tell, I mean, I also, I'm, I also have a political science background. I did some uh, polling as well. So I tell people uh, the sample size is equally important. It's not just a number. 49% doesn't mean 49% of America. It's 49% of the sample size. And most of the times, many polls, the sample size uh, right. fluctuates between 2 to 2,000, 2,500. Two, 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 so, mm. yeah, that, mm. that's something which we need to consider you as know, well. Mr. I agree. I actually have very limited time on my hand, so which is why I wanted to take yeah. this quick question from sure. you. The last one uh, to sum up this session, that is, are we expecting Trump to cook up, uh, cook up trouble? after the results is that because we've we've been hearing rumors about uh, you know them doing some work laying the grounds for trying to claim fraud election fraud after the results if he loses are we expecting anything of that sort yeah in fact uh, again, I never take sides. Uh, in fact, uh, Trump, I, I believe, uh, has like an hour ago, has already claimed that there's some fraudulent ballots as we speak. Yeah, he had um, said it in, for Pennsylvania, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, right. in, yeah mm. you're right. You're right. Uh, there's a county called Lancaster County in mm. Pennsylvania. Uh, he's already claimed that. So uh, I'll let you conclude from that statement. Mm. But uh, I'm just giving a fact. But I, I'll let you conclude. But but yes, and and again, the, which is why I was insinuating on the election integrity before. Uh, I think the election officials are a lot more prepared than last time. Uh, they, they got more training, uh, you know, and they got more people. Poll workers are much more trained, and so yeah, they're much more prepared uh, for uh, for things like these and even court cases, right? So the last time that was a shocker. There there weren't. There weren't instances uh, in electoral history where there's so many uh, li uh, litigations or court cases. But this time, even from a judicial perspective, I think they're prepared to handle any election integrity cases or fraudulent uh, ballot cases and so on and so forth. So, yeah, America is much more prepared. Uh, and and the, it, it's, it's not an election night. I know everybody calls it a D-Day, but there's nothing called a D-Day. I believe it's, it's either it's, a, it's either D-Week or a D-month. It's a run-up to the D-Day probably, yes, at this given point, yes. Yeah. Since it's a little yeah. difficult yeah. to de determine when the results will actually be out finally. True. But uh, Mr. Ayagiri, thank you so much for joining us here on News 9. And well, those were some interesting insights uh, that you have provided us with mm -hmm. on these uh, particular matters. And at the very end hour that we are calling it, at least at this very point.